When most people hear the word creatine, they likely think of 20-something year old gym rats or bodybuilders pounding protein shakes. And for years, there's been this persistent myth or misconception that creatine somehow causes people to gain body fat, or at the very least, it makes you look bloated or puffy. But an October 2023 study in the journal Nutrients countered that, and it's worth unpacking, especially if you're over 50 and you're trying to preserve your muscle, stay lean, and to keep your metabolism stoked as you age. So today, I want to break down this study and talk about whether creatine can actually help you lose body fat or if that's just another overhyped fitness headline. But first, some quick background. Creatine is one of the most studied supplements in the world. It's naturally produced by your body and it's stored mostly in your muscles where it helps recycle energy during short bursts of activity with the aid of our body's cellular battery, which is called ATP. That means every time you lift something heavy, climb the stairs or spray, Creatine is part of the energy system that lets your muscles perform and recover. Now, here's where it gets interesting because as we age, our natural creatine stores tend to decline. So supplementing can help us maintain muscle mass and strength, and now it's even being used to enhance cognitive performance, which is why we're hearing so much more about it from men and women who are in their 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond. But what about fat loss? Does it result in fat loss or does it cause people to gain? gain body fat? That's the question, and that's where this research comes in. Here's what the October 2023 nutrient study looked at. Researchers wanted to know, does creatine actually help reduce body fat when combined with resistance training, or is that just gym folklore? They pulled together 12 randomized controlled trials, which included 266 adults under the age of 50 to see how creatine plus resistance training compared to training without creatine. Now, before you tune out thinking, well, that's not me. I'm over 50 and your thumbnail promised you'd be talking to me. Hang with me because the researchers actually compare the results to an earlier meta-analysis that they did in older adults. And the takeaways are really relevant to all of us, particularly those of us 50 and above. Here's what they found. People who trained and took creatine saw about a 1.2% drop in body fat percentage compared to those who strength trained but without creatine. Now, that's clear clearly not a dramatic number. It's subtle, about a 1% decrease in body fat percentage on average, not a 10 pound weight loss in 10 days. But here's the thing, even though body fat percentage went down slightly, the absolute amount of fat, meaning the number of pounds of fat didn't really change much. It only dropped about less than half a pound. And statistically, that's basically a wash. So what does that tell us? Well, what it means is that the people on creatine were likely gaining lean muscle mass while maintaining maintaining the same amount of fat, which shifted their overall body composition. In other words, they didn't burn fat away, they built muscle underneath it, which made their total body fat percentage smaller. And that right there is a key point that many people miss. But here's why that matters, especially after 50. Once you hit your 50s, you're naturally losing muscle every year, somewhere between one to 2% of your muscle mass annually. And that loss of muscle slows your metabolism, making it harder to stay lean, even increasing your risk of things like diabetes and frailty, increasing the risk of physical decline and leading to higher risk of falls and injuries with age. So anything that helps you preserve or build lean muscle tissue, even if it doesn't burn fat directly, is still helping you improve your overall body composition and your metabolic health. That's why the researchers called this reduction small but meaningful. Because while creatine doesn't directly burn fat, it helps create a stronger, more metabolically active body that does burn more calories, especially when paired with strength training. Now, in plain English, creatine helps your muscles store more phosphocreatine. And when your muscles are topped off with creatine, you can lift heavier, push harder, and recover faster. And that means over time, you actually do build more lean muscle mass. And muscle tissue is metabolically active. It burns more calories at rest by far than fat tissue or any other body tissue does. So the more lean muscle mass you have, the higher your your resting metabolic rate. That's how creatine helps you burn fat indirectly. It's not acting directly like a fat burner or a stimulant, but it's helping your body become a better fat burning machine for burning calories around the clock, even while you sleep. Researchers acknowledge that creatine does increase cellular hydration, which improves muscle performance and recovery. And when you perform better in your workouts, you naturally are going to create more calorie burn and preserve more muscle mass over time. 
But here are the details that didn't make the headlines. One thing I appreciate about this paper is that the researchers dug into a bunch of subgroups. Younger adults versus older, men versus women, low dose versus high dose, and guess what? None of those factors made much of a difference. Whether people were taking less than five grams or more than five grams of creatine per day, training three times a week or five times a week, men versus women, the results were basically the same. The takeaway wasn't more is better, it was consistency is what matters. And that's the message that I share with people all the time, especially people who are just beginning to train or they're restarting a strength training program. You don't need to overthink dosing strategies or cycle creatine. You just need to show up, train regularly, and take around three to five grams of creatine monohydrate per day. But here's the real question. What about those of us over 50? In our 50s, 60s, 70s, and beyond, the same researchers actually looked at this group in an early your paper and they found that adults over 50 who combined strength training exercise with creatine saw a 0.55% reduction in body fat. Again, this isn't huge, but in the same direction as before. The real story wasn't fat loss, it was muscle preservation. Older adults on creatine kept more lean tissue and gained more strength and had better overall body composition compared to those not supplementing. So whether you're 35 or 65, the pattern is pretty clear. Creatine doesn't increase body fat. If anything, it improves your muscle to fat ratio, which is exactly what we want as we age. Consequently, the bloating myth, if you've ever heard that creatine makes you look bloated or puffy, here's the truth. Creatine does increase water inside the muscle cell. That's what gives your muscles that fuller, denser look. But that's intramuscular water. It's not subcutaneous fat and it's not water underneath the skin. It's not making you fat and you're not retaining water in a bad way. You're actually hydrating your muscles more efficiently, which helps them perform better and recover faster. And if you're training regularly, that's a good thing, not a bad thing. So practical tips for people over 50. This isn't medical advice, so see your doctor and get their blessing about what you're doing. But if you're thinking about adding creatine to your routine, here's the path most studied. Start with three to five grams per day, plain creatine monohydrate. You don't need fancy versions. No loading phase is necessary. No cycling, just daily use. You can take it any time of the day, morning, post-workout, with food, without it. It doesn't really matter. What matters is consistency. Optimal hydration. Creatine pulls water into the muscle cells. So make sure you're keeping yourself well hydrated while supplementing. Train at least three days per week, including all of your major muscle groups on a regular basis. Resistance exercise is where the magic happens. Creatine without strength training doesn't make you stronger and it's not going to help you build muscle. Make sure you get adequate protein, aiming for around one gram of protein per pound of ideal body weight per day if you're training regularly. And if you're just getting started, don't overthink it. Start small, stay consistent, and remember this isn't about overnight fat loss. It's about long-term metabolic health, strength, and independence as you age. Lastly, this study really reinforces something I've seen both in the ER as well as in the gym. Most people over 50 aren't struggling with too much creatine. They're struggling with too little muscle. And as we get older, muscle is the one tissue that helps protect us from falls and from injury and from structural and metabolic decline. Creatine isn't magic, but it is one of the safest and most evidence-backed supplements that can help us preserve muscle as we age. So no, creatine won't melt away your body fat, but it will help you build the engine that does. As Dr. Peter Atia talks about in his book, Outlive the Science and Art of Longevity, we will all live through a marginal decade, that final decade of our lives. And that decade can either be fraught with pain, disability, loss of mental and physical function, or it can be a time where we still have the strength and the fortitude to enjoy the final years of our lives in a meaningful way. But that won't happen by accident. That will only be the case if we're proactive about taking measures to stay strong and active in the years leading up to and into the years of our marginal decade. And it's something to be thinking about now and not later. If you haven't read Dr. Atiyah's book, it's worth picking up a copy and reading it. I'm not affiliated with Dr. Atiyah, but I'll put a link down in the 
the description where you can purchase his book. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button and please share this video with someone you feel would benefit from watching it as well. If you want a little more history about how creatine got so popular, watch this video next. And if you're over 50 and focused on staying strong and healthy and independent with each passing year, subscribe to the channel, stay strong, stay consistent, be well, and I will see you in the next video.